Even if you've seen the movie, you may not have picked up on these details. What was that? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things you missed in Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald. Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at hidden details, callbacks to the original franchise, inconsistencies with the established timeline, and much more in the second installment of the Fantastic Beasts franchise. Number 10. The Ceiling at the French Ministry of Magic Welcome to the French Ministry of Magic. What is your business, please? Part of the movie is set inside the French Ministry of Magic, and if you were paying very close attention during a particular scene, you may have noticed some hidden Easter eggs. You may have to pause it to really take in the details, though. The beautiful domed ceiling features a variety of magical creatures, and also gives the French names for them below their images, like Hippocampe, Crapcorne, and L'Oiseau Tonnerre. There's also an interesting love-good connection here, because two creatures associated with Luna and Xenophilius, the Plimpy and the Erumpent, can be seen here. Number 9. Nigella's Carving Is this a surprise? Finding me in a classroom. In one scene in the film, Lita goes back to Hogwarts and sees a desk that her and Newt's initials are carved into. Eagle-eyed fans may have noticed another name carved here, Nigellus. If you read the original book series, you'll know that Phineas Nigellus Black was a former headmaster of Hogwarts and one of Sirius Black's ancestors. His portrait hangs both in the room that Harry stays in at Grimald Place, as well as in Dumbledore's office. Sir. Phineas! You must go to your portrait at Grimmel Place. Tell them that Arthur Weasley is gravely injured, and his children will be arriving there soon. And is able to give the current headmaster information this way. The symbol of the Deathly Hallows is also visible on the desk. Number 8. Thestrals Return In the original Harry Potter series, magical creatures called Thestrals pull the carriages that transport the students to the school at the beginning of each year. Nothing's pulling the carriage, Harry. It's pulling itself, like always. The interesting thing about them, though, is that you can only see them if you've seen someone die. So the implications that most seem to be aware of them here are quite grim. They're prominent in the fifth book and movie when Harry and company use them to get to the Ministry of Magic. These eerie beings appear in the new film and have a role pulling Grindelwald's carriage when long-distance travel via apparition isn't possible. Number 7. New Spells Ventus. There are countless spells uttered by the characters in the original Harry Potter books and movies, but The Crimes of Grindelwald introduces us to a collection of new ones that had previously never been seen. What you gonna do? What you gonna do with them, Mr. Commander? Sergeant. Sergito is a spell that lifts enchantments, Ventus can be used when dueling, and Apare Vestigium tracks recent use of magic. Apare Vestigium. I keep a nipple. Get looking. We also learned that Nebulus can be used to create fog in a pinch, and Okausi is used by Lita to literally make someone shut up. She's so annoying. Did you see her last week? As <laughs> That would definitely come in handy. Number six, the Philosopher's Stone. The what? Honestly, don't you two read? In the first Harry Potter book and movie, Nicholas or Nicolas Flamel manages to play a pivotal role without ever appearing on the page or the screen. The only stone currently in existence belongs to Mr. Nicholas Flamel, 
the noted alchemist, who last year celebrated his 665th birthday. He is, of course, the creator of the Philosopher's Stone, which is the item that leads the action of Harry's first adventure at Hogwarts. In The Crimes of Grindelwald, however, we actually get to see Flamel, and it gives us some insight into his role in wizarding history. Are you, are you a ghost? No. No. I'm alive. But I'm an alchemist and therefore immortal. The creators of the film do a good job of making him look just as old as we imagined him to be. We also get to see the stone itself when Flamel's safe is opened. Number 5. Name Drops I have names, sir. Uh, there was a Rosia. Evan Rosia. Rosia is dead. Dead? Yeah, he took a piece of me with him, though, didn't he? <laughs> I didn't know. Potter fans won't soon forget the ill-fated dueling club that was formed by Lockhart in Chamber of Secrets. Expelliarmus! <laughs> and it turns out that Dumbledore had actually organized a similar extracurricular activity decades earlier. Not learning from the first two. <laughs> In this scene in The Crimes of Grindelwald, he mentions a student named McLagan, who we have a feeling must be an ancestor of the insufferable Cormac. He's the best teacher we've got. Thanks, McLagan. Get out. Come, McLagan. At other points in the movie, names like Lestrange, Travers, Rosier, and Carol are dropped, all of whom appear in the Harry Potter series at various times, and some of whom are members of the Sacred 28 at this point in the story. Meanwhile, you've built up quite a little network of international contacts. However long you keep me and my friends under surveillance, you're not going to discover plots against you, Travers, because we want the same thing, the defeat of Grindelwald. Number four, the appearance of Kelpies. You know the Kelpie's easier with two. Many of the creatures that appear in the Fantastic Beasts movies are rolling originals, created just for these stories, but lots are also derived from real-world mythology. Kelpies, for example, which are part of Scottish lore, are mentioned a couple of times in the original Harry Potter books, but have a bigger role in this movie when Newt keeps one in his apartment. Traditionally, Kelpies are known as shapeshifters who often assume the form of a horse. The most famous Kelpie is, of course, none other than the Loch Ness Monster. Number 3. What did Dumbledore teach? Fans of the books may be perplexed by a scene in the movie that shows Albus Dumbledore teaching defense against the dark arts at Hogwarts, doing a lesson on Boggarts. So, Mr. Scamander fears what more than anything else in the world? Having to work in an office, sir. <laughs> Go ahead, Newt. Of course, the subject seems like a natural fit for the man who would go on to become the only wizard feared by Voldemort. But in Potter canon, it has always been stated that Dumbledore was actually the Professor of Transfiguration. Ferraverto. This begs the question of why his career path changed at some point during his time as a teacher. Hopefully we'll find out in movies to come. Was I such a bad student? On the contrary, you were one of my cleverest. I said bad, not stupid. Number 2. The Whomping Willow If you've done a close reading of the Harry Potter books, you'll know that the Whomping Willow was planted at Hogwarts the year that Remus Lupin arrived there, in order to help him make his way to the Shrieking Shack, where he could go during his werewolf transformations each month. So why then did the Willow appear in a scene in Crimes of Grindelwald many years before it should have existed? They know me. Or they'd hide. They only nest in trees with bond quality wood. Is this a simple continuity error? Or is there something else at play here? We may never know. Not to mention the damage you inflicted on a whomping willow that's been on these grounds since before you were born. Honestly, Professor Snape, I think it did more damage to us. Silence! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Did 
to departmental memos. We used to use owls. The mess was unbelievable. Clean up the kappa. And you, get ready. is what we are fighting. It is your birthright, my boy. Number one, how old is Professor McGonagall? One of the things that caused a major uproar in the Potter community is just a very brief moment in the film when Dumbledore refers to a fellow teacher as McGonagall. Go with Professor McGonagall, please. The problem is this movie is set in 1927, and based on previously established timelines, Minerva McGonagall was only born between 1935 and 37. Have the film's creators decided to disrupt the canon in order to let McGonagall be a character in the films? Lestrange! Stop running! Lestrange! Disobedient children! They need to come back! Stop! Shame on the house of Slytherin! Or was Dumbledore referring to a different McGonagall altogether? Minerva's father was a muggle, and her mother wouldn't have shared her surname. So this is a complicated and tangled issue that we're not sure how to sort out. Perhaps it would be more useful if I were to transfigure Mr. Potter and yourself into a pocket watch? That way one of you might be on time. We got lost. Then perhaps a map? Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.